Hi, I'm John Paul Casanegra. And I'm John Sexton. So John, a lot of people think black and white is really special. And you've spent a lifetime looking at black and white images, seeing in black and white. What do you think is so special about black and white? Well, I think the, the main thing, John Paul, is that it's different than the way we perceive our world as we go about the process of living life. Mm. Um, color is an important part of our life experience, and somehow to me, and it's a personal thing for sure, you have beautiful color images, I have many photographers who work exclusively in color that I love their work, mm -hmm. but for me, I find something magical about the ability of black and white to distill some element of simplicity and some abstract quality and perhaps a bit of a unique quality to what could be a commonplace scene in color. Mm. They say some people dream in black and white and a lot of people think of black and white as being uh, more surreal. Does that fit with your experience? Absolutely. Uh, I, you know, I love the word photography, light writing. And I think that black and white is so much about light. It's about luminosity. Uh, the first time I saw a really beautifully executed silver prints by Ansel Adams, Edward Weston, and Wynne Bullock in an exhibition, it was as if some of those images had a light within them, mm. as if they had some sort of an illuminating source. Mm. And that captivated me to want to try and see if I could figure out how one could go about, on rare occasions, often beyond the photographer's control. Mm -hmm. uh, and something happens that uh, can make a print that just seems to have a quality of luminosity that's above and beyond what its center, sensitometric interpretation might be. <laughs> <Goodness. laughs> yeah. Poetry. Well, this, this is the, the thing. Uh, I was visiting with a workshop group this morning and we were talking about the difficulty of describing a photograph in terms of a critique or a commentary. And I think that if photographs could be conveyed and communicated in words, they would be an effective essay. Mm. Uh, and uh, thank goodness there are great writers, but I think a great photograph can never be contained in words. So we sometimes end up looking for these words that would not normally be associated with photography or the visual arts, like highlights that might be brittle if they were problematic. Mm. Uh, that, that's not a, a photographic term, but I always, when I'm looking at a photograph trying to describe it, I always find myself grasping for words to communicate something about it because it's, I think, the intangible. Mm -hmm. It's the, like a, a, a beautiful piece of music. It's not just the notes of music. It's the space between the music. It's how the air vibrates in silence. And that's one of the things I find magical still today about uh, the traditional silver gelatin print. Mm. I find that there is a fullness, uh, a richness, um, and for me it more closely resembles how I think I perceive the world. Mm. Because uh, we, we really live in memories, and uh, so we see something, and then from that instant on, it's a memory of that experience that we have. And uh, I find that uh, on those rare occasions when the whole photographic process works, and that means there's going to be some luck on your side, you're going to have good fortune if you're going to make a good <laughs> photograph, you can do everything right and look at the image and say, what the hell was I thinking? You, go, you know, it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. Technically it's all there, but there's something missing. There's that poetry, there's that emotion, there's that intangible that just somehow didn't fly into the process, didn't get on the film, didn't get into the paper, didn't get into the photographer. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the photographer, maybe I didn't invest enough of myself. Or maybe I invested too much. Maybe it was up here instead of here. But when those situations do occur, I find it very exciting to turn on the white lights in the dark room and see an image when it conveys something that you would hope for before you even set up the camera. Mm -hmm. and when that memory uh, it seems as if there, it is synchronized with the experience that you have looking at the print. Mm -hmm. Do you ever find that uh, your memories are changed by the things that you create? Absolutely, and I can, I can tell you that I like to go back to the same places that I've experienced. Uh, I like to see new things, but I love getting to know a place over time and 
after I've lived with a photograph, and maybe it's just a contact print, maybe I never made a finished print of it, mm -hmm. I go back and I, sometimes I'm startled at how different the reality was. Mm -hmm. Because I've altered it in my mind just in terms of time, but then looking at it as the photograph, especially if it is one where I've printed it a few times and I've worked on it extensively in the darkroom, I go back and uh, the reality, the photograph has become the reality. Right. It's, it's, it's altered and in some instances maybe almost replaced what I thought was a pretty objective piece of, of memory up here. I know, I think it's fascinating when those become substitutes for memory and when they start to replace memory, our direct experience, but in the past, perhaps looking at the photograph is our direct experience in that moment. Yeah. And then of course there's a re-encountering of the scene, which I think has great value as well. It makes the whole thing more complicated. And it's fascinating that black and white is so often thought of as in the past, somehow antique, uh, along with certain truth values. And quite interesting, uh, Keith Carter yes. said the basic elements of photography are time, light, and memory. And that always challenged me, the memory part of that. It really got my brain turning, and it still turns. Mm -hmm. and it's quite fascinating. And I think that uh, on those rare occasions when you share a photograph with someone else, and they somehow connect to it, they have a positive response to it. Uh, that, I think, is, is, is a, a wonderful experience. Many times you don't get to actually interact with that person or you hear about it after the fact, someone has seen one of your images somewhere. And uh, oftentimes their attraction to that image, unbeknownst to you, has something to do with a memory that they have mm -hmm. from their life experience. Mm -hmm. And, and my mentor, Ansel Adams, who is best known for photographs that do not contain human beings, uh, used to frequently say that there are two people in every photograph, the photographer and the viewer. Right. And that's one of the things that I find so uh, exciting about photography, is that ability to communicate to someone, uh, I think sometimes at a very deep level, uh, a level where words would not be effective. Mm -hmm. And uh, I find that the, the same thing is part of, of making photographs. When you are so excited that you want to make a photograph and then it ends up unfortunately being, well, you could say it was a failure. Uh, I've tried to think of it as an investment, but it, it didn't meet your expectations. So it wasn't a complete success. But you have, have that experience that you build upon. And if the photograph doesn't meet your expectations, if you don't feel disappointed, if you don't feel angered, if you're not bummed out, well, then there probably wasn't really anything there to uh, find in the photograph in the first place. Uh, you know, the, those images where you're, you're so anxious to process the film, so nervous that there could be a failure, those are the ones that usually are going to go into the enlarger first for me. There's some, uh, I feel there's an element of risk, I feel there's an element of loss, uh, that if the photograph doesn't succeed, mm. uh, but those are the ones that have the greatest possibility of succeeding. Mm. And they, they hurt the most when they don't. And frankly, most of the time they don't. But when they do, you never forget. Again, it's going back to that, that memory. And I think the, the photographic memory is seemingly objective, but I know that it can't be objective, because otherwise, if I lived in the memory of the photograph, that went back to the place. The two should match. So there's an interpretation from optics, from the way film records things, from the way we uh, react to our own photographs or someone else's. And I find that alchemy, those intangibles, to be part of the appeal of photography. And for me, uh, nothing against digital, but it's, I find it a more uh, hands-on, a more tactile process to be working with films and with papers in the darkroom. Mm -hmm. Fascinating exchange. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. My pleasure, John Paul.